Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? I hope everybody's doing good and staying safe. Um, my name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy, and I am a um, brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Um, I paint with you guys live here on the Dixie Bell Facebook page every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So we are here for another week of painting. Only today we're not going to paint. We're going to talk about wax. And I don't do a whole lot of waxing, but I think it's really appropriate for the piece that I'm working on behind me. Um, I like wax because it gives um, the paint a really authentic, aged feel and texture. Um, so we are going to apply a coat of wax on this and then we're going to use some dark waxes to really accentuate some of my details. So um, Dixie Belle paint has a has a built in top coat in the paint. So you don't have to top coat it. But a lot of people want that extra layer of protection on that paint. They want a little bit of wipeability for easy lower maintenance um, as they're using the piece of furniture. Um, and wax is one option for that. There's also a bunch of clear coats in the Dixie Bell lines along with the hemp oil and um, other things you can use to seal the paint with. But we're gonna talk about the wax tonight. So you guys, my husband, Sean is here. If you guys have any questions, pop on and we'll answer those as we go. But otherwise, let's talk about some wax. So waxing is very important. Um, do I want to answer that? <laughs> um, I mean, it can be. Yeah, it's your protective layer on your paint. Or hold so. on, uh, Mary's got a point. I need to sit. I need to get six feet away. Oh yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah. That's gonna oh, be a problem. Yeah, this is definitely. I don't want to get sick. <laughs> no, you guys. I feel like I'm coming down with something, but just like a cold. I just have some congestion, and then my youngest son has been throwing up today. Super fun at our house right now. On top of that, we can't get groceries. Like milk and eggs are rarities around here. We were able to get some milk, but it's going to, I mean, we got three kids home from school now and it goes rapid fast. So it, it's going to be gone any day now. I was ordered, able to order some Kleenex on Sam's Cup last night and I felt like I was committing a crime for doing it. I don't know. Did you pay for it? They shipped today. Oh, did they? Tell you, huh? Kleenex ship. We got Kleenex. Thank guys. goodness. Yeah. Like a freaking tasting. Any team wheeler? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gary's dropping it off. <laughs> um, Okay, so I like to apply wax with a brush. You can apply wax with a um, rag as well. That's a personal preference, whatever you prefer. But I like these. These are the um, wax brushes, the natural bristle brushes from Redesign with Prima. I like to use a, a natural bristle brush because the bristles have more tension in them. They're packed tighter and you want a little bit of rigidity, some firmness in your brush when you're doing this. So um, it actually takes very little wax. I will just dab my brush into my wax. This is my best thing wax. I had a container that was almost empty, so I cleared out the bottom of it and I put it in with this new container. So that's why some of it has some color on it, just because I had dipped my brush in and out of it. It still goes on clear. Um, the Dixie Belle wax looks white in the container, but it does in fact go on clear. So you want to start with very little wax because all you're trying to do is to put enough on that your paint absorbs that wax. You want to just seal the paint, but you should not have any wax sitting on top of your paint. If you do, that's too much wax. It will be sticky. It will never cure. Um, and that's the problem. The problem is you're using too much wax. So I'm just going to tip my brush in my clear wax and then I just... Um, this piece here has a textured finish on it. So my um, inspiration for this was to go for a look that reminded me of burlap. And so I used the color, ready? Burlap. This is Dixie Bell burlap. This is a stretch. Yeah, and then I used the little triangle tool that comes with the Dixie Bell wood graining tool. And actually it's over in my sink, so I can't even show you guys that right so now. So really quick, I just wanted to say hi to Tina and Paula, two people from Oklahoma. So the whole hi state guys. is in there. Yeah. Hi. Okay, and then I will take my wax and I'm just going to mas massage it into my paint. And you want to use, I mean, this takes some elbow. So you will feel it in your arm after you're done waxing if you've done it right. It takes a little bit of work because you want to make sure you're digging it into all the crevices. I use a circular motion like this and I'm just massaging it into my paint. And, and I'm very tactile when I wax. Like I have to... I have to put it on and then feel it. And you can feel the difference right away. So one difference you can see, look at this right here where I put wax inside this square and then below it where I don't, you can tell it just deepens the color of the paint just a little bit. That's just sealing the paint. 
So now if I come down here and add a little bit of wax, I mean little bit, I just am tipping the brush and then I want to work that wax into my paint. Sorry about the doors on this are vibrating. Shh. Very obnoxious. So then you can feel it. And then we're going to let our wax set up for a few minutes while I work my way around this piece a little bit. And then we will come back and we will buff this. I like to let it set up for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, just to give that wax some, let it solidify a little bit. I mean, it should be worked into that paint. This is new paint. The paint is still fairly porous. So now what made you use wax? I'm using wax because obviously this piece has a really aged, distressed look to it. And so it just really suits the look of this piece. It's going to have a nice texture to it. But here's the nice thing about Dixie Belle waxes. Dixie Belle waxes are water-based. So if I want to put this clear wax and then I'm going to use some brown wax in a few minutes. If I want to put this wax on and then come back and clear coat it afterwards, I can do that too. Because the Dixie Belle waxes are water-based. So when I come back to buff the wax, I want to remove any wax that's sitting on the top of my paint. It's like waxing your car. Does anybody do that anymore? The camera guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. <laughs> the same guy that does my oil uh, changes. <laughs> yeah. It's like waxing your car. That's exactly what you want to think about it. And when you wax your car, you've got to put some elbow grease into it, right? Don't act like you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I've done it Come on before. now. I mean, not in the recent past. And then when I rub this, I mean, I, wax is something you need your hands for. You have to touch it because when I first put this on, it felt a little bit sticky. But then when you take off any excess that's on there, now I just feel my paint and it's got a smoothness to it. That's all it should feel like. If it feels wet or... Um, anything like that it means you've got too much wax so I would say number one just really try to focus on using only a little bit of wax and up here where I have it waxed I can still feel you know uh, the paint has a very matte feeling it feels very dry very chalky um, and then down here it just feels very soft and smooth it feels buttery it feels buttery um, okay Vanna so <laughs> as far as the sunflowers are those molds uh, some are molds some are transfers. So this is a combination of the Redesign with Prima Sunflowers Transfer, and then I layered the molds on top of it. So these are a mold. And let me show you guys how I how I did these. Um, they still need a little bit of work to them, but I'll at least show you what the castings look like. Hang on one second. I'm gonna grab the actual mold too. So okay. why wouldn't you use like a flat clear coat? I could. I definitely wax. could. It's absolutely <coughs> personal Excuse preference. Me. It is absolutely personal preference. Um, I do use clear coats a lot. One thing I do like about wax, so when you use clear coat, there's a waiting period. You have to then let it dry before you can come back and put any dark waxes or anything else over top. Um, clear wax is one of those instant gratification things. I can come right back over top of this, so it's great for working on camera. Because now I can come right back over top with no dry time and I can put a dark wax on top of this. So that's one thing I really like about it. So this is the mold that I use for my sunflowers. And when I cast them, it comes in pieces. It's got the centers and then it's got the petals. So what I did, you'll notice on, I, I need to trim this one. I'm just going to take a saw and cut the edge of this off and then sand it a little bit. Mm. But... <laughs> 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 Sean knows that means he's going to come back and, and cut the edge of this off for me. <clears throat> By um, the way, Sheila said that waxing is a husband's job, so... I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. It's way too hard. It makes me get sweaty. So your boyfriend isn't going to have anything to, to do? Yeah. Um, so what I did, I the petals... I don't have any of the bigger petals cast. Oh, I do. Where are those two petals I threw aside? Right there, right there. In the middle? Okay, here we go. Okay, when I cast these petals, I didn't like them sitting just adjacent to the center. Outside of it, it looked funny to me. So I actually took and I made the ring of petals first, and then I put the center just a little bit over the edges. 
and it made it look a little more authentic to have the center sitting on top of the petals, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, you can't see my glue, but my glue will dry clear, and then this I need to come back and touch up the paint on this edge. But all that will, will be done. But just so you guys understand that I, that I cast the petals, and then instead of having them sitting outside, I actually made a ring of them and then put my center just over the just over the top of them. So the center is a little more raised. The petals are actually what's attached to my piece. And then this just sits on the top of the, the edges. And then I may add some leaves and stuff. I still have, you know, some more. But I really liked the look of the transfer being underneath and then the 3D flowers being over top. So here you can see the transfer peeking through underneath and then the 3D flower over top. I just thought that was a cool layered look. So I'm not thrilled with this. I actually put a, uh, I cut a stencil with my um, silhouette machine and I'm not 100% sure I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and wax it and if I don't like it, I will just paint over this part up here. Um, it's that simple. So where are those molds from? These are, I can give you guys a link, but these are uh, by Redesign with Prima. And I have a link for you guys I can put up in the post. If you guys wait till I get off, I'll throw it up there. So again, I'm just tipping my brush and a little bit of wax. And I can feel the difference. I can feel where I put that wax on. I mean, I can feel right here there's like a transition where I don't have wax up top. I'm 90% sure I'm going to paint over this. I just don't really? like it. Yeah, I feel like it looks dirty. I don't do dirty. I, I wanted it to look like a vintage seed packet. That was kind of my inspiration. So is it dirty or dirty? So because of that, I think I might go ahead and work and um, continue my waxing and I'll just focus on the bottom tonight. So this paint has a texture in it. it has a texture because I used a texture tool. I wanted that cross hatching pattern from the um, in my texture so that when I come back and I put my dark wax over this, I want it to pick up that cross hatching pattern in my paint. I'll just do this side and then I can turn it back to the front and we'll do the bottom on the front. And then I can, I can paint over that um, stencil I did and then I'll redo the top on that. So when I scrap cross hatch through my paint, I made some of them go deep enough that it exposed some of the wood underneath. So that's what you're seeing here. But I think it adds to that authentic kind of burlap john says he's having a quarantine party don't be offended if you're not invited oh. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-man party good for you john good for you that's my favorite kind of party we have watched everything on netflix like last night sean said do you want to watch this and i was like no i don't i don't want to watch anything on netflix i'm so bored but there's just so little options to do and my three kids are bored out of their minds because it is also raining here for 15 days we have a forecast of rain cold rain yes and it's cold too so our fireplace is going and it's pouring down rain so i can also aside from looking for the texture that i told you about the feel and the texture i also can see that there's a difference in the sheen of my paint so down here where I have put wax um, has a little bit of a sheen. It's catching the light for me differently versus up here where I haven't put any. And so looking at it in, in the light will help you tell where you've gone and where you haven't gone. So what's the wax that you're using? So I'm using Dixie Belle Besting mm -hmm. Wax and Clear. And this is gonna seal my paint. I'm just gonna Clean that up, get it a little bit even. I mean, I, I can feel it, you guys. When I wax a full piece, my arms tell me that I've been waxing. You want to work it into your paint. It should not be sitting on top of your surface. And then, even after you've used so little wax, you want to come back and just take off any that's on the surface. I'm just using a rag. This can take off some of your paint. It can't take off some of your paint. I'm rubbing pretty aggressively and this is very fresh paint. So it will give you kind of a distressed look if you're going over edges and things like that. You can distress some of your paint off by buffing your wax. 
Okay, so remember that instant gratification part I told you about? I also want to put dark wax on this. Um, so I have Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax in brown here. Just a brown version of what we used before. And I prefer to use a separate brush when I'm using brown wax. I'm going to grab a smaller, a little bit smaller brush. Something like this, I think. And I'm just going to do this little panel here. And again, very little wax. So the reason I put the clear on before I put the brown wax on is because that clear wax is going to seal my paint. Um, the paint is porous. So if you put the brown wax on before your paint is sealed, your paint's going to absorb that dark color. And then you won't be able to wipe it back. But because I sealed my paint first, I can control how dark I want this brown wax now. So I did that to give myself control. Again, very little of the brown wax. I want to make sure that I work it into those crevices. And it's going to go on really dark. But I'm going to take some of this back off. And you can choose to just do this in the crevices or do it all over like I'm doing here. I'm doing it all over because I want this wax to fall into some of my texture that I created in my paint. What the heck? We got good weather. I know. All I've over the a place. Lot of people what the have heck? Good weather. And we're in California, which is usually we have good weather. I mean, here we are like. I pay no. for good weather. <laughs> yeah, we pay a lot of money for good weather. <laughs> Okay, now I've got my brown wax all over my piece and I'm gonna take my same rag and I'm gonna just start buffing some of this off. Can you guys see how I'm able to wipe some of it off? It darkens my paint color, but I can take some of this back. And I can take it back as much or as little as I want. So you essentially get an extra, another paint color out of it. But if I feel like this is still darker than I want, you can see my, just my regular paint color right up above it. Clear wax is an eraser for your dark waxes. So I can take my brush that I put my clear wax on. I'm gonna work this into the center a little bit. And I can lighten up just the center of this a little bit. So I really have control over where I want that wax. And then I can see in here, it kind of grabbed all the details of my, um, my cross hatching pattern in my paint. I hope you guys can see that because it's a really cool texture in there. You're in my way. So um, waxes can, uh, dark waxes can also be used to just do a little bit of shading. So I've got brown wax over all this, but I'm going to darken up these corners a little bit. Because that's where, on an aged piece, dirt would gather. So I'm taking a third brush. I've got now one for my clear wax, one for my brown wax. This one's for black. We're dipping into some black. And I'm just going to ride this black wax just in the crevices. So those are darker. Sully Joe says hi. Hi, Sully. How are you? How are you guys doing over there? I'm just gonna darken up this piece. You guys, Sully Joe's from Would You Bend Moldings. She's over in the UK. Okay, and then I can take a little bit of that off. And then just my crevices are shaded a little bit. But I think that gives a really, really authentic aged look. You can also use Dixie Wet or Dixie Dirt for this. So Dixie Dirt is a powdered formula. Let's use some dirt on the front. I'm gonna turn this back to the front. And we'll do this panel down here. Only this time, um, instead of the black wax, I'll use some Dixie Dirt. So I'm gonna do the same thing. We put our clear wax on the front here. I'm gonna tip my brush in some brown wax. Very little wax. I'm telling you guys, these containers of wax last me forever. I've been with Dixie Belle for what, three years now? And I think I'm only on my second container of wax. I don't, it, I mean, I use very little of it. A little bit goes a long way on these containers of wax. Yesterday when my kid's school um, got canceled for another four weeks, I did panic then. That was my <laughs> moment of panic. I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And then they said, don't expect them to go back even before summer. 
And I was like, what am I gonna do with my kids home for like five months when we can't even go places? And it's cold outside and raining. So that was my moment of panic. Okay, so I mean, you can see how brown wax just deepens the paint color. So you really get an, another paint color out of it. So if there's a color in the line and you just want a slightly deeper version of it, you can put either the brown wax, grunge gray wax, or black wax. Dixie Belle offers all three of those. Um, you can put that over the top and it will deepen your paint color. So now I told you we're going to use a little bit of Dixie Dirt. Let's put some dirt in these crevices. So this is Dixie Dirt and Charcoal. Now the dirt is made to work in combination with the wax because it embeds itself into the wax and that's what seals it and makes it permanent. So it's a powder formula, very fine powder. And I just dip it into another brush and then I'm gonna tap it off because you get more on your brush than you probably even realize. Then I just tap it off and then I can take and just dust in huh? my crevices. Usually you're taking dust off of a piece. This is the time you're gonna put dust on a piece. And I can, so I put it right in the crevice and now I'm gonna work it a little bit out into my wax because I have that fresh wax on here. It will embed itself into that wax. And then I can wipe it back. Um, I'm gonna wipe back the center of this, how I lightened the center in the last one, just using my clear wax to kind of erase a spot. I just want it to look like a highlight in the center. So this is painting with waxes. I'm getting all the same depth and dimension you can get with paint, only I'm using my waxes and my Dixie Dirt to do it. So I love how it darkened that crevice right there, the Dixie Dirt. Dixie Dirt to me is the most authentic way to get that aged look because it most easily duplicates the look of dirt. It's a very easy product to use, so I can just really feather it out into my wax and give myself nice soft edges. I'm gonna come here and do some around the petals of my sunflower. My sunflower needs some touch-up paint. So I can dirty up these petals a little bit and then just take it off. With dirt, I do a lot of putting it on and taking it back off again. It's exactly what you're supposed to do with it. Oh, I need to put my brown wax down here. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna use this little brush. This deepens up the brown wax I'm using to deepen up my paint color. And then it's also finding all the um, crevices in this cross hatching pattern that I created in my texture or in my paint because I want it to look like old burlap. So my paint color is Dixie Belle Burlap. And I use the texture tool that comes with the Dixie Belle wood graining tool. And I just ran it in a cross hatching pattern horizontally and vertically. And that gave me this, you know, there's little squares in my paint. And then I'm gonna take my Dixie Dirt and do underneath here as well. So Dixie Dirt comes in three colors. This is Dixie Dirt and charcoal. But I like the look of it against the brown of the wax and it's this is more of a charcoal color in the dirt because dirt doesn't have just a flat brown color. It has, you know, naturally different colors. And I can make this as smoky looking as I want. I can carry that up. I kind of want to make it look a little more aged around my sunflower. And then I'll come do this crevice over here. But I will sit here after I'm done with my paint and I put my wax on and I will sit here and these are just little details, little finishing touches that I go through and add. And sometimes this process can be just as long as the painting is really getting all the details right. You guys are awfully quiet tonight. Maybe Sean's quiet tonight. He must be feeling having our kids home for a week now. <laughs> so I love that. Now bear in mind, I have some work I want to do up here. I'm going to take that stencil off because the more I look at it, the more I just really dislike it. 
that's okay because it's just paint, right? So I can just go back up there and fix it. And I'm going to put some Dixie Dirt in these crevices here. Actually, I'm going to use my brown wax first because I don't think I got brown wax in here. And then I'm going to ride just some Dixie Dirt down these, down this fluted detailing just to darken those so they stand out a little bit more. And all of a sudden I've got a detail in my piece that you didn't really notice before, but that contrast makes you notice that there's some fluting detail right here. Yeah, for some reason, comments are, everybody's freaking quiet, that's for sure. All right, let's see. Okay, you guys wanna see what I'm gonna do on these legs down here? Let me put my waxes and stuff away because I like how this is looking down here. This is what I'm gonna go for. Um, I'm gonna, let me turn this back to the side so you can see it again. You can see the difference that that brown, um, the brown wax made versus up here where we just put clear wax. But up here where I put the clear wax on and then I buffed it off the top, it just feels super soft. If I mean, I see all the time where people are feeling their wax is sticky. You've got too much wax. So very little wax is the key to getting a really nice wax finish. Here, hold on one second. I want, want me to look at the, it? Yeah, the well went dry with the comments. I'm wondering if it's something on... Someone throw me a comment. There we go. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> okay, so it was legitimate. I apologize. Okay. I don't want to fall asleep at the wheel. So let me show you what I want to do. I'm just going to wipe a little bit of paint off of this leg right here. On these legs, these are really pretty wooden legs. It's got a really nice turned leg on it. And I don't want to change I don't want to change a whole lot about it, but it does have some little chips in it and things like that. So I just want to clean it up. Um, I want to keep them in this dark wood finish. So what I'm going to use for that is going to be um, No Pain Gel Stain, Dixieville No Pain Gel Stain. And I've got the color I have is Espresso, which is the darkest color that they have. Well, darkest wood tone, there's a black. Now this is an oil-based gel stain. It's beautifully creamy, goes on super easily. This is one thing I wear gloves for because I do not like having my hands stained. Um, and this is an oil-based wood stain. So I'm gonna pull my sleeves up a little bit. We're gonna get dirty. So your sunflower is just really quick. Your mold that you used. Yes. What's the mold and what did you, what's it, what's it cast from? The mold is called Forest treasures it's a brand new release from redesign with prima um, i have a link that i will throw up for you guys when as soon as i get off to show you where to get this actually here if you give me one second let me come over to my camera and i will throw it up for you guys right now comment give me one second i'm throwing up the link to okay Bam, bam. It shows from Dixie Bell, but I just threw up the link to where you can buy the new molds from Redesign with Prima. Um, and the sunflower mold is in there. And then the sunflower transfer is what I used it with. When you click on that link, if you sort by sort by newest, it'll bring up the newest products first because this is a new release. So that's the best way to find the new stuff first. So then I'm going to take this old sock. I like to stain with old socks. Now, no paint gel stain can go right over an existing finish. So if you've got a wood finish that just has little dings or chips in it, um, gel stain can just wipe over the top. Now to answer the question, it's forest treasures. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I had to go grab it with the foot, look at it. So I can wipe this no paint gel stain right over the top of my existing wood stain and what it does, it just darkens any, I'm going to take this back for a second so you can see where I've got little dings oh, in my man. wood finish. Don't worry, I've done this before. Uh -huh. I don't do it when you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Thanks. I've got spots down here, for example, right down here on the bottom of this uh, molding where it's just lighter. 
Um, it's been worn through to the original wood, but if I take a little bit of gel stain, I can just take it and wipe it on here. Oh, Brittany's got a good point that they were supposed to save the socks for when TP oh, is. Oh, yeah. Huh? Shoot. Um, wow, this use... is going to look funny. Yeah, this one's for Sean. Uh. <laughs> And I can just wipe it over the top of that and it gets into all these spaces where the raw wood has been exposed. Trying to get you guys it. an angle so you can truly see where it's applied because it's wet. Here, maybe I'll put it on this leg right here. You can see it's got go. some just dings and scratches on it. Let me clean this up really quick. And I just wipe it over the top of the existing wood. If your wood has a really glossy finish on it, you may want to give it a scuff sand before you do this. Um, but otherwise I can just wipe this right over the top of my wood finish. Isabel says there's no sunflower in the newest release. Uh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Uh, are you looking on the website right now? <laughs> Sherry says it looks like the sock was already used for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It so was about that. Clean. So this is, uh, I use all of our mismatched socks come, come out here for staining. So can you actually, can the gel stain go over paint? Yes, it can. It can go over paint too. And all it will do over the paint, if you want to give yourself a clean painted finish, you can create some faux wood looks. Um, you know, if I were to put it over, I could put it on here because I've got wax on here, but you can see right there, you know, I could wipe this on using it almost like a glaze. I'm going to take that back off because I don't want it to stay. But yes, you absolutely can put it over a paint and use it almost like a glaze for that, you know, for the faux wood look finishes. So that's my plan with the legs. I'm going to clean them up and then they've got a beautiful shine to them. And when I put clear coat over that, they've got a refresh. It looks like a fresh yeah. wood stain look without all the dings and marks and pits that, you know, old wooden legs would have in them naturally. Can you apply it over Dixie Mud? Yeah, you can. So the thing with Dixie Mud, Dixie Mud is stainable, but it's gonna stain in a slightly different color than the wood. You know, So if you've got a patch this big of Dixie Mud, that patch is gonna be a slightly different color than the wood around it. That's to be expected. It's not an exact match for the wood, but you can stain it. You're just gonna get a slightly different color than your wood will stain to. So that's my look, you guys. I'm gonna refresh this paint finish up here, and then I will wax it just like this down here because I really like this look. Um, I'm going to add some details on my flowers, finish painting these up um, and getting some dirt and wax around these so you can so you can really see the relief against the transfer behind it. And that's going to be my finished look. So I'm going to let you guys go. But that was a little bit of um, how to add a coat of wax. Very little wax, circular motion with your wax brush um, and then buff it off after a few minutes. And same thing with your dark waxes. And then we added a little Dixie Dirt for dimension in there. Now, just really quick, as far as the molds that are hanging over, those are going to be I'm going to cut some. I'm going to cut. cut these off. Yeah, I need to come back in here with a saw, but I and I need to touch up this paint here. But I ran them up to where I want them to. So right here, I can just come. I will cut the edge of it off with a reciprocating saw, sand the edge a little bit, and then put paint on it so it matches my flower and then it'll just look like it ends right there on my piece. So now another just, quick okay. question. When you have the gel stain, what do you prefer to seal it with? Um, any of the Dixie Belle clear coats. So I will use, I will use clear coat on the bottom of this where I put the gel stain. Um, gator hide, if I wanted to use flat clear coat, satin, any, whatever your preference is, they all work great over the no paint gel stain. You do need to wait 72 hours because the gel stain is an oil-based product. So you want to wait 72 hours after you apply it for it to fully set up and then you can put the water-based clear coats over top of it. All right, I'm going to hop off. Thank you guys for hanging out on another fun Thursday night. You guys can make it through the next week. I know this is hard times right here. We're all going through it. Um, I want to thank everybody who's interacting with the groups and out there painting and sharing your painting right now because I think that's getting us through, a, a lot of us through a time that's kind of a difficult time, a really boring time. But um, I know I find solitude in painting when I'm bored out of my mind. It's one thing that I can just zone out into. So Dixie Bell is still open and still shipping right here. Right now, you guys, my link is up above in the post. And let's keep painting and keep sharing because I'm really enjoying seeing your guys work through all this. Happy Thursday. Have a good weekend, guys.